I welcome my readers to my YouTube channel Sita series by Nandini Sahu. I am Nandini Sahu. I am a professor of English at Indira Gandhi National Open University, New Delhi. I am a creative writer. This book, uh, Sita, a poem, is my long narrative poem where I have deconstructed the character Sita from the Ramayana and I have placed her vis-a-vis -vis contemporary women. This text is published from the Poetry Society of India in 2014 and it has been reprinted in 2020. And uh, also the long poem with 25 cantos is a part of this book, uh, Collected Poems of Nadini Sahu, published in 2022 from Authors West, New Delhi. So you can uh, find the text, the poem, long poem in both the poetry books. Uh, this YouTube series titled Sita series by Nadini Sahu will have total 26 videos. The first video which I am doing now is uh, the introduction to Sita. Here I will be talking about why Sita? Why did I write this long poem? What prompted me to write this long poem? Basically I will be talking about uh, the character Sita from the Ramayana who we have forgotten the qualities, the, the, the character traits, the attributes of Sita who we have forgotten. I will be talking about that in this. Uh, for that, I would quote Matthew Arnold uh, from the text Absence. You know what Matthew Arnold says? And we forget because we must and not because we will. I am so grateful to my readers to each one of you for reading the text with utmost interest, for giving so much love to this poetry collection. Multiple research papers have been written by the scholars. The text is being taught in a couple of universities, in the gender studies departments, in the English departments. Many PhD scholars and MPhil scholars have done their PhD thesis and MPhil dissertations on this particular text. I hope you will listen to me, like and enjoy the Sita series, the YouTube videos, the 26 videos that I am going to present to you, my dear readers. Uh, there are more than uh, 300 Ramayans, 300 versions of the Ramayan. And uh, I will be t reading all those Ramayans, 300 Ramayans. I will be taking references from those 300 Ramayans, the folk Ramayans, the classical versions of the Ramayan. And uh, being a folklorist, when I worked on the MA in Folklore and Culture Studies for my university, I had an opportunity to visit many places where there are some references to the Ramayana. I traveled across the globe. I went to many countries which have, uh, the, which cross the Ramayana map. I met many people, the scholars of the Ramayana, the oral, uh, uh, the, the scholars related to the oral literatures of the Ramayana, the oral verses of the Ramayana, I met them. I had, in, I had a critical engagement with many scholars uh, who have been working on the written texts of the many Ramayans. And when I wrote this text, it only enriched my ideas about the Indian knowledge systems, India and its rich cultural heritage, Indian folklore, Indian classical literature. Uh, you know, in this text, this is not in the first person narrative. The text has a first person narrative. And uh, when I look back and forth at my entire literary career, 
Sita uh, seems to have shaped up as a long poem uh, that is that was seminal to my thoughts and uh, that found expression in my creative impulse uh, through this particular poem. I thoroughly enjoyed writing this poem. I put my heart and soul in this poem. It has always been there with me, sometimes haunting and some other times fueling my mind in all my thoughts and action. In that sense, uh, it is perhaps one of my most ambitious and enduring eco-feministic poems. Uh, one long poem, it has 25 cantos, and a narrative of my life had been taking shape when I was writing Sita, like a photograph from a dark room when I was writing Sita. I was living the life of Sita. My theology says that uh, in her previous birth, Sita was Vedavati, the daughter of uh, Rishi and Rishi, and then she was doing a deep penance in uh, the forest to marry Lord Vishnu. This is what my theology says. Ravan happened to see her and he tried to marry her forcibly. Ravan tried to marry Sita forcibly. This is what uh, one of the versions of the Ramayana says. Uh, Vedapati jumped into fire when Ravan wanted to marry her forcibly. Vedapati jumped into fire. And uh, then, you know, jumping into fire, taking birth from the planet Earth, like all of us know about the life of Sita. She took birth from the planet Earth. Then going back to Mother Earth at the end of her life, then having uh, you know a natural uh, rather than having a natural and a human death sita went back to the planet earth these nature linked attributes make the western critics compare sita with heroines from other many other classical uh, and you know classical texts like erudice and uh, then here is for me sita is beyond any comparison sita cannot be compared with the characters from any other literary text. And uh, she is my ageless and timeless and omnipotent uh, ideal woman. Sita is undoubtedly uh, the most significant figure among the Indian mythical women, like all of us know. And, uh, uh, you know, surprisingly, there is no, no particular text in Indian mythology who talks about the real story of Sita. Uh, diverse versions uh, from the myths, from the literatures and from the folklore, from the classical texts, they glorify Sita. They glorify putting, you know, glory on her head. And then uh, sometimes, you know, they, they compare Sita with the most obedient woman abiding by the rules, by the law of the land. Uh, but for me, uh, this is often, uh, you know, a, a kind of character that is very, very complex and she needs re-reading. She deserves a reinterpretation of her character. We have constructed a character uh, which was not probably intended by Valmiki when he wrote the Ramayana or the many folk Ramayans when they interpreted Mata Sita. And uh, some of the, the folk texts have compared Sita with goddess Kali. At the same time, uh, a, very, a very equally interesting uh, interpretation about uh, Sita goes uh, that she is the most empowered woman who took her own decisions in life. She decided for herself. She wanted to go to the forest with Lord Ram, so she went. She wanted to go back to the Mother Earth when the second fire test was, test was asked to her, she went back to the planet Earth. So looking at these characters, of these qualities of Sita, uh, I feel that there is a bit of Sita-ness. Uh, maybe this is my coin is the term Sita-ness. Uh, so there is a bit of Sita-ness in every woman and uh, in fact in every man. Uh, the, the persons who are self-willed, who are determined, who are close to nature, who want to do something optimistic and positive in life, 
who want to contribute to the civilization to the planet earth i see a kind of sitaness in them uh, during my childhood i am reminded uh, so this text also you know uh, is very very nostalgic for me when i wrote the text i was going through uh, uh, some mental uh, i would say some torments uh, i was in deep pain at the same time i was very happy ecstatic diverse emotions were going through me they were running through me and i was very nostalgic when i wrote this particular poem sita i poem during my childhood i was very disenchanted to hear the story of sita's two exiles from my grandmother uh, especially the second one uh, ram uh, almost the only hindu god who was uh, ek patni prata you know he had just one wife and uh, who was the only hindu god to uh, to reject his wife if i can use the word reject and to ask her uh, for fire tests so i was confused when i was young that this person uh, lord sri ram he loves his wife to such an extent that he would never take a second wife uh, no matter what but then he is the only god who had to sacrifice his wife send her to the forest uh, for her second exile so this this was very very confusing for me and i was heartbroken and uh, the the ramayana was uh, right in describing sita's plea to mother earth to take her back uh, in the lines uh, i am just quoting the lines uh, through which you know or she from the ramayana i'm quoting uh, where she wanted mother earth to take her back uh, uh, if unstained in my thought and action i have lived from the day of birth spare a daughter's shame and anguish and receive her she wants mother earth to spare the shame and the anguish and mother earth take me back i want to go back to you and then i was tormented i was teary eyed how could lord ram the maryada purushottam the the paragon of all virtues desert his wife a woman who deserved all dignity how could he desert her just in respect of the wishes of a washerman a male chauvinist that kept my mind engaged and thinking i kept on thinking about the existential issues of life i kept on thinking about the pain that sita might have undergone through you know through this kind of treatment given to her and uh, i thought about the categorizers i thought about the patriarchs in the society i was not at peace with myself when i went through this and i was never confronted with the way my you know i was never uh, convinced with the way my grandmother told me that uh, uh, she would defend lord ram that uh, you know he never took a second wife and then uh, he took a golden sita in the ashwamedha yagya uh, but then uh, also she told me that uh, uh, lord ram uh, he never remarried and after uh, maya sita was sent to the forest ram placed an effigy of sita of pure gold which symbolized chastity and purity i read about that this means he never doubted her character but you know being the king it was the demand of his position to respect the wishes of his subjects he carried out the promise of his father and he took exile he he should also respect you know uh, the law of the land and abandon his wife but was it logic when i read that when i listened to that i thought was it logic apart from the uh, apart from listening to my grandmother's oral stories i read uh, a whole lot of the ramayans during my formative years some of them were uh kavita vali by tulsi das and rk narayan ramayan which was a rendering of kamban's ram charitam into prose in english the ramayan of tulsi das translated by fs cross 
and the seven kandas of ramayan by valmiki balaram das's jagamohan ramayan in odia adikavi sarala das's vilanka ramayan in odia i read all of them and then i watched that uh, the ram leela performances in odisha were also very very important and uh, the viewers came uh, to have not just to view not just to watch those but to have a critical engagement with those then in due course of time now in delhi in the ram leela ground when i watched the ram leela uh, and uh, once in a while also i was invited by the ram leela uh, performers uh, to be the narrator for the western audiences uh, as a scholar of english literature uh, the ram leela performers and the ram leela organizers they also invited me to to listen to to look at the ram leela and then interpret that for the foreign audiences so day by day year by year i had a very deep and a sensitive engagement with the ramayan and then uh, i read gangadhar meher's uh, tapashwini and upendra bhanjas by the hisabilash both in odia and then i was quite impressed by their poetic rendering of sita's character how sita was sitting near the river when rishi valmiki came and asked her requested her to go to the ashram with him and those visuals when i was reading that kind of poetry i was actually viewing sita from very close quarters and reading the religious texts of many other uh, religions uh, also inspired me and somewhere in this text this particular text sita a poem somewhere in this poetry book as an epic poet you know i have referred to the moses story from the old testament and uh, drawing the various parallels between the ramayan and the holy bible so you know ramayan is not just a text it's a it's a way of life it's a way of living so uh, the ramayan and the holy bible i made comparative uh, analysis of both the texts uh in odisha my home state uh, the bhagavat tungis were places where people gathered in the evening to listen to the discourses from the shrimad bhagavat gita and the ramayan the tradition is sadly on the verge of being wiped out anyway i listened to the ramayans uh, as a child in my village and then i understood that the shrimad bhagavat is the most popular among the 18 puranas it contains the essence of the scriptures the scriptures and the vedas it imparts the knowledge knowledge of life that is doing one's duty without any attachment like t s eliot would have said depersonalizing oneself it teaches us to to leave our pride arrogance and our ego our devotion has nine marks listening to the name of god chanting his name remembering god uh serving worshiping saluting him friendship and self you know dedication and we should remember that the fruits of our achievements to god without bothering about success or failure are the important qualities that one can find in the characters in the ramayan and sita as the most important character from the ramayan i correlated uh, these qualities uh, that i inherited from the shrimad bhagavat with the life philosophy of sita mm, and then uh, and then i interpreted her character with devotion to me sita was not just somebody that i loved i was devoted to sita i have been devoted to sita and when i grew up i thought objectively you know when i was a child i was very subjective uh, very personal and i i took the pain of sita to my heart i used to blame uh, lord ram for doing uh, what he did with his wife just because a male chauvinist complained but when i grew up i looked at the ramayana most objectively i looked at the characters of sita and her husband lord ram most objectively and then i came to a conclusion that for me uh, yes to sita does never mean no to ram both of them had their own perspectives i tried to look at the story of the great ramayana from the points of view from the perspectives of both sita and lord ram
As you can see the cover of the book, one side we have Sita and one side we have Ram. So this is like both of them have equal share to the pain, the happiness, the pleasure, whatever happened in their lives. And both of them have lived life separately but together, in a way together. And the togetherness lies in their love for nature, love for humanity, protection of the planet Earth. Both of them protected the planet Earth in their own you know, unique ways. And that is what uh, I made clear to me. I mean, I got a clear idea about both the characters as I read the many Ramayans. And when I grew up, I looked at the Ramayana objectively, as I said, and uh, uh, I tried to accept whatever had happened in Sita's life, uh, maybe more positively. Her never give up attitude made her my role model. She never gave up, no matter what. Even though she was the icon of rebellion, she had great patience. Her birth from Mother Earth and uh, I know that made her stand for nature and with vivacity and truth. She is the epitome of uh, a virtuous woman in Indian cultural imagination. The collective imagination of people. Mahatma Gandhi during his non-cooperation movement uh, projected Sita as uh, the ideal character uh, before the Indians. Even the Gandhian philosophy was influenced by the character of Sita and uh, their uh, you know, anti-colonialism and respect for the cultural values, these things, you know, that there is a comparison between uh, Sita and Mahatma Gandhi. Both of them have these attributes and both of them were rebellious enough not to accept any injustice, patient enough to protest silently and uncompromising when it came to proving a point, proving virtue. That way, Sita was truly modern. Like I said, Sita is the original eco-feminist. So to me, Sita is truly modern, even though her patience and silent suffering is sometimes criti criticized by the radical feminists that uh, by being so forgiving uh, and, you know, the kind of injustice done to her by accepting that, uh, she has encouraged the subjugation to women. Sometimes even radical feminists would write that. Uh, well, I do not agree with this version of the character of Sita. Uh, to my mind, Sita has the courage to break all conventions. She is not a conventional woman. She is never the brooding, crying, complaining woman that she was rejected, she was dejected, she was left alone. Rather, she accepted life as it is. She took life in her stride. She made the best use of the opportunities that life gave her. Perhaps I controlled myself by, you know, I, I kind of consoled myself by thinking that uh, Ram could never have a normal life after he banished Sita. So this is the other side of the story that I thought. Ultimately, after her going back to the mother, uh, to planet Earth, he had to make an end to his life uh, after empowering love and Kush to become the kings. Uh, I thought like that and then, uh, you know, uh, sometimes even I thought that the first fire test, during the first fire test, the Lakshmi of his life, Sita, uh, she had to go through the, you know, go through a lot of mental trauma and torment. Sita was like Parvati and she raised her children single-handedly till she met her husband back. Once the children were 12 or 13 years old, she met her husband again. Till then, she groomed them single-handedly, making them such powerful that they could defeat the entire army of Lord Ram during the Ashwamedha Yagya. Then she was, you know, none other than Goddess Kali when she refused to go back to Ayodhya as the queen and wife by proving her purity and chastity once more for the second time. She was like Goddess Kali. And uh, the people of Ayodhya 
they realized ultimately they realized that by abandoning a woman uh, they had they lost all glory of ayodhya this reminds me of an incident that you know for the launch of sita this poetry book i went to uh, kathmandu i went to nepal years back and then uh, people came to meet me uh, they treated me like uh, sita because i am the author of sita so they thought uh, that some of them thought that well she is sita but i told them no i am just a researcher and i am a poet and i have written a poem on sita she is my role model uh, but anyway uh, some of them told that um, they told me that honge ram ji bade aadmi but hum apna bitya wahan kabhi nahi bihayenge so i thought that well this story has touched the collective imagination of people even when we read the folk tales and folk songs from india especially those related to the sita myth orally transmitted to us from the mithila region uh, this sentiment you know comes through she has been accepted as, as the daughter of every household in the mithila and the parents are reluctant even today to marry of their daughters in avadh this happens in mithila Uh, so probably this is a bit of injustice uh, to the other side to to lord ram uh, in all wedding songs of the region one can hear only the name of sita never ram one of the folk tales you know depicts the story of uh, shiva dhanush once sita was you know now she was smearing cow dung so this is how the folk tales will go so sita was smearing cow dung on the floor in one of the folk tales then her father decided then she just happened to lift the shiva dhanush and put it aside she just picked it and put it somewhere else by looking at that her father was very surprised and he decided that uh, who whoever can break the shivdanush into nine pieces is eligible to marry my daughter i was concerned after reading that folk tale even in folk folk tale uh, we have uh, that kind of uh, gender inequality if you allow me to say uh, in our folk you know if a girl is good enough like sita was good enough to lift the shivdanush and put it aside that was so heavy not even thousands and hundreds of warriors could lift the shivdanush and sita did that effortlessly seamlessly and then her father decided that she will marry a person who will break the shivdanush um well so i thought if a girl is uh, you know good enough and praiseworthy she does something really good then her husband must be at least nine times better than her is it so i questioned myself as as an eco feminist that is it the law of the land that the husband should be nine times better than the wife and uh, again uh, the very idea of swayamvar is to be is to like to facilitate uh, the girl to select her husband among the many men present there but by putting a precondition of getting her the mightiest husband at least nine times better than her again uh, patriarchy has taken the freedom of women that's what i thought so the if you can take this folk tale to uh, to the part of your gender discourse then probably you can even question the folk tale that uh, not just the ramayan all the versions of ramayan if the swayamvar uh, episode is discussed vis-a-vis uh, gender studies then this is my question where is the freedom of a woman of course uh, sita found the best person for herself she loved lord sri ram since she was born he was always in her mind and she found her loved one as her husband but then what about uh, the women of today you know the precondition of any marriage even today the precondition of any marriage uh that into in the to find a bridegroom and mostly decided by the elders in the family even today in india and then uh, many loveless marriages happen because elders try to find a person who is better than the girl a groom has to be better than the man i mean the, the woman from the girl uh, so it is an accepted fact that the story of sita comes to us as an entirely captivating with a captivating contemporaneity 
Sita is never obsolete. The qualities of Sita, the struggle of Sita, the existential issues of Sita, they will never be obsolete. They will always come back to us in some form or other. Since the last 2500 years, the story has been articulated in remarkable ways in the diverse uh, you know, texts of India. A hint of Sitaness is there in many mythical and folk texts of India. But in these interpretations, not only uh, the, the historical accounts have been uh, fiddled with, they are juxtaposed with, you know, the a decipherable degree of uh, magnetism. And then, uh, if you do a new historicist reading of Sita's character, or you do a cultural materialist reading of Sita's character, then probably you will find that a uh, lot of interpretation of Sita's character is missing. And, uh, you know, uh, as uh, I was writing this text, uh, you know, there are very subjective thoughts that came to my mind uh, willingly or unwillingly however the, the the story of Sita was creating a kind of deep engagement in me uh, to think about oppression austerity obedient uh, allegiance to husband and some of those qualities of Sita which are glorified but the real Sita who embodied feminine power who audaciously decided on conveying and uh, on, on having a dialogue with Lord Ram uh, whenever it was required and then who decided that I will go to the exile and then who dared to face Ravan single-handedly all these months and then who uh, you know took the decisions of her life like the decision of being a mother to her children and taking care of the ashramites, taking care of the nature and uh, Rishi Valmiki and all the people in the ashram, giving them education and cooking excellent food for them. So that kind of a Sita that I thought should be presented now. I would rather say that Sita lives in our collective uh, uh, consciousness as a powerful inspiration. And uh, all the progressive and independent women uh, emulate, learn something or other, knowingly un or unknowingly from Sita. Kamban has uh, uh, you know, portrayed the Ramayana as a divine comedy. And it has been translated by uh, A.K. Uh, R.K. Narayan. And he had no religious bias. Somewhere he says that uh, religion is like one's underwear. One can change when one wants it. Anyway, I was moved um, uh, by reading those interpretations of the Ramayana where Sita uh, decides her own life and in full public view, uh, she questions Lord Ram about the rules, the law of the land. And somewhere she questions that even if you could not consider me uh, as your wife or your mother, the mother of your children when you, you exiled me during my pregnancy, but I am also a citizen of the country. So if you are a great king, then please give justice to three citizens, me and my children. Uh, so these, these things that I read from many Ramayans actually they influenced my mind. I kept on thinking about it. I was deeply grieved. And I was shocked to think of the helplessness of a wife who loved only her husband. And in her thought and action, she is asked uh, to live alone among the strangers. I was deeply grieved. But anyway, without uh, being um, you know, biased to anyone or to any idea, I am going to, uh, I mean, talk about uh, Sita, the real character of Sita in the forthcoming videos, the, the 25 YouTube videos, where I will try to uh, talk about the eco-feminist Sita, her engagement with the planet Earth, Sita as a teacher, Sita as a mother, and uh, Sita you know, as a scholar, and Sita as a daughter, and of course Sita as the queen and the wife. The various roles that Sita has performed, she has played. I will be talking about those in the coming uh, 25 videos. It's a poem about, it's a long poem about the contemporaneity of Sita. 
could i say i have deconstructed the stereotypical sita please allow me to say that and then uh, distribute her in bits and pieces among among all of us you me and everyone the world says uh, a woman is mysterious and she wants to look good get admiration and devotion yes a woman does yet she doesn't uh, you know desire to be coveted even that is a question lot of self questioning will come in the text that why did sita believe in a golden deer nature would never produce a golden deer but when sita saw the golden deer in the forest she believed in it she compelled her husband and then her brother in law to go after the golden deer so there i try to problematize the character of many women that why do they run after something impossible why cannot they understand the dichotomy of knowledge and power this is what i call the sita ness of a woman that she has to merge into the dichotomies into the complexities into the binaries of power and knowledge that is how she can perfect herself she can well there is nothing like perfection but that is where at least she can use knowledge as her touchstone sita was a woman close to nature as i have repeatedly said she was the original eco feminist yes if i may be allowed to say that and uh, deserted twice abducted once she never spent her life brooding over a decipherable destiny rather she took the charge of mother nature she took the charge of education of the ashramites grooming her children and uh, she was like the mother earth at one point sita realized her own weakness that makes her a great woman isn't it and uh, well at the end of the poem i leave it to my my readers to to understand the real character of sita uh, and to decide for themselves i am not going to impose my ideas on my readers let them construct and deconstruct their own sita uh, you know and uh, sita's character is very very scientifically presented in the text and uh, i find its indian parallel in uh, the the text has its indian parallel in uh, many other texts like you i can compare sita's character with draupadi with mirabai even with karna uh, even with lord krishna so there are so many comparisons uh it is earlier's the wasteland uh, uh, it has the the lyrics you know where uh, a very powerful character is projected and uh, even i find a parallel of uh, uh, the characters from the wasteland here a part of me says that uh, she should never have given even the first fire test when ram asked her to do that publicly in lanka rather she should have gone back to mother earth instantly at that point a part of me says that as a woman Uh, with dignity and a woman who is highly sensitive and highly emotional a part of me even says that but uh, other part of me says that what sita did was perhaps the best possible thing to do uh, i will not say that a woman is complete only when she is a mother but yes uh, a woman has to give birth uh, so that you know the civilization the planet will have human beings the civilization will go on so perhaps sita wanted to prove a point that the categorizers pointed a finger at her when she came back uh, from ravan's place to her husband the categorizers pointed when pointed a finger at her so she wanted to prove them wrong that you cannot really question a woman you cannot point your fingers at a woman and get away with that so probably to prove a point to prove that she was never wrong she gave the first fire test probably that is one reason the other one is she had lot of incomplete duties and responsibilities she wanted to give birth to her children she wanted to serve her queen mothers she wanted to serve 
the land where she was the queen herself. I mean, she was going to be the queen herself. So she had a lot of incomplete tasks to fulfill. That is what I thought as a mature woman later on when I wrote the text. So probably that is the reason why she appeared into the first fire test. She gave the first fire test and she came out successfully. And then she fulfilled all her duties. She was a mother, she was a queen, a wife, everything that she wanted to be. And she forgave her husband because she was a woman in love. Women do that. And so giving all these things in, in my mind, keeping all these thoughts in my mind, I have written a very complex poem where the varieties of characters uh, that we see in the society have a kind of sitaness in them. I talk about them, them. And then also I talk about Sita's closeness to nature, the different attributes. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I leave it here. I am going to recite all those cantos uh, for you. Each canto uh, will have an introduction by me. I will talk about, um, say, the critical aspects of each canto. And then I will read out, I will recite the cantos, canto 1 to 25. Uh, it's one of my most endearing, most ambitious and uh, my one of my, I would say, my best poems. It's close to my heart and uh, I wrote Sita when I lived the life of Sita. Uh, I internalized her happiness, her pain, her suffering, her sorrow, her uh, confidence, her strength, her moral character, everything I internalized and I wrote this long poem Sita and in each canto as I said uh, there will be a critical engagement with that particular canto in the beginning and then the poem would follow, the canto would follow and then I will leave it to you to listen to uh, the poem and then give your comments. Once again I am very grateful to my readers and my critics who have given me so much love and who have accepted my book Sita, a poem with so much of love. Wherever I go to deliver a lecture uh, to any university, to, to any seminar, conference, any literature festival, wherever I go, people talk to me about this particular text, Sita. This is my most loved text. Uh, so I thank you all for accepting Sita with so much love. Now, uh, listen to the forthcoming uh, 25 cantos and send me your feedback i await your feedback uh, is definitely going to enrich me it's going to uh, make me realize my weaknesses and my strengths if any uh, i'm giving no judgment i'm not asking you to accept any of my opinions and views given in the text uh, just deconstruct my text and construct your own Sita because there is a Sita-ness in you, in each one of you. Thank you. Namaskar.